Hi, I'm Carrie from OESD and welcome to today's Stitch Spotlight. We're going to talk about a collection called Freestanding Floral Wreaths. That's collection number 12876 that can be purchased from your local OESD retailer or by going to embroideryonline.com. Freestanding Floral Wreaths is the second in a series of freestanding wreaths. The first one was uh, put out uh, in 2019. This is Freestanding Holiday Wreaths. This is 12829. Um, and everything we're going to talk about today applies to freestanding holiday wreaths as well. So if you have enjoyed this collection, here's another one that would coordinate with it or for a different season. And if you haven't tried the holiday wreaths, we suggest that you look at up and check it out. So freestanding holiday, freestanding floral wreaths um, is a wonderful collection of summery springtime uh, floral wedges. So the way that this collection works is that the wreath is made up of eight different wedges. You can see here uh, we've constructed this wreath out of um, one of each of the wedges in the collection. But you can certainly assemble this however you'd like. In my sample I'm going to make today, I'm using one design, this one here, and I'm going to duplicate it eight times. And you can see in the way our artist Tim has drawn each wedge that a lot of care was made that so that each the artwork in each wedge actually will flow into the next wedge if you duplicate it uh, around in the circle. So you'll see that that actually flows, the flowers will actually flow from this wedge all the way around. So we're gonna, I'm going to take you step by step onto how to make this. And again, everything I'm talking about here will apply also to freestanding holiday wreaths. Um, and I hope that you will enjoy this process. So let's get started. Something that's really important to know is that all of our collections come with a PDF, a full color PDF on them. So whether you get your uh, collection via uh, CD, USB, or by digital download. All of those options include uh, a few things. They include all the formats for all embroidery machines. So it doesn't matter which brand you own, you can stitch out uh, your project and you own all the formats. So you don't have to choose on the beginning in the beginning. So if you digitally download these, you have access to all of the files formats for as long as you want them. So if you change brands or have multiple brands, um, you're in good shape. The other thing that it includes is this PDF. So the PDF has a few things on it. If it's just a collection that has designs on it, um, it will just, this PDF will be your color chart. So it will tell you what color steps um, to use um, at what point. If your collection is also a project, like we are doing today in freestanding floral wreaths, it will include the step-by-step -step instructions with full color photos on how to execute that project. So if you are um, at home stitching at one o'clock in the morning and your local store is closed and you have no one to help or our customer care team is sleeping, um, you can follow these instructions. We spend a lot of time to make sure that they are as clear as possible and you'll have great results. So we're going to step through this together today, but if you um, get stuck and you do not have me with you in your sewing room, you follow these instructions and you'll be in great shape. So the first thing um, to know is that these, the instructions for the project are on the PDF after the color chart. So scroll past the designs and you'll find the collection supplies and instructions. So let's talk about the kinds of things that this collection requires and why. Um, they are asked for. So you'll see the first thing that it's going to talk about is the stabilizers you're going to need. So the first stabilizer is our OESD Badge Master. So that is this product here. Badge Master is a wash away, a water soluble stabilizer. This is a vinyl type product um, when you You'll see it in a little bit, and it's kind of a thick vinyl sort of looking project, product. And it can be used for a lot of things. It can be used to make badges, hence the name. So if you were stitching out something with a solid set and stitch around the outside, um, like a badge or a patch, you could use this product. Um, we use it a lot in our freestanding um, structures. Reason being that it is very starchy. So water soluble stabilizers are made of starch, essentially. Um, they are a something that is safe for your pipes. Um, it's just starch like if your potato water, if you're boiling potatoes um, or some other starchy food. 
So the badge master dissolves in a slower manner than our aqua mesh. So it leaves more starch behind. And what that does is it gives your project more stiffness, right? The more you rinse your project, um, the, the less starch that will be left behind the softer the project. So typically when I'm rinsing out water soluble stabilizers, I will just rinse until I can't see the stabilizer anymore um, so that some of that starch is left to add that stiffness. So Badge Master we're going to use in this project and that's gonna add stiffness to your finished wreath. We're also going to use Aqua Mesh Plus. So Aqua Mesh Plus is our water soluble stabilizer. This is Aqua Mesh you may be familiar with. Aqua Mesh is the water soluble stabilizer that we um, use on all of our freestanding lace. It's a fantastic product. Um, but what this is, when you add the word plus to any of our stabilizers, it essentially means it's a pressure sensitive stabilizer. And I'm gonna show you what that means, but basically the, the short version of it is it's sticky. So we'll talk about how that works in just a second. Aquamesh Plus, again, a water soluble stabilizer. It also has a water soluble adhesive meaning that when you rinse this out, the, the adhesive, the tacky part, also dissolves. So you won't get left with a kind of gooey mess. Uh, you can stitch through this without gumming up your needle. It's a wonderful product, and I have a great tip in a little bit on how you can use it for other things uh, as well. So Aquamesh Plus is the next stabilizer we're going to use. And then the last product that it's called for in the, the stabilizer section is kind of not a stabilizer. Um, fiber form is a stiffener. So I'll show you what that looks like in just a second, but essentially it is made, um, you, we're going to use it in this project to kind of give even more stability to your wreath. Nobody wants a, a floppy wreath. Um, you want it to be able to stand up on its own. So the fiber form is what's inside of the fabric um, to give it its rigidity. So uh, I'll show this to you in a little bit, but it is really um, a great combination of stability and also um, softness. So you can fold it up if you need to stuff it into something. It's great for bags if you want to add stiffness to the bottom of a bag if you were sewing a bag project. Um, it's stitchable and it is fantastic. We use it for lots of things. So fiber form is the third stabilizer um, that we ask for in this project. The other thing that you'll see on these instructions is it tells you about the fabric that you'll need. So in this case, it is calling for um, the fabric that we used to make this sample. So you can see we use the pink fabric twice, the yellow fabric twice. Um, so it will say purple fabric, four pieces. And the reason for that is you need one top piece and one bottom piece for each wedge. My sample, I'm going to make the same fabric all the way around. So I'm basically just going to cut double um, pieces, so uh, two times eight. And it will tell you um, what size to cut here. So seven and a half by six and a half. Um, it gives you approximate yardage. Um, something we like to say is that we give you approximate yardage so you can pull from your stash or go shopping at your local store. But depending on how you cut, how you hoop, if you put two wedges in a hoop, you may have overages. Um, we try and be generous so that you don't have, you're not short fabric. If you're like me, a little extra fabric is always better than not enough fabric. The fabric that we use, speaking of, for this project is one of my favorite fabrics. So this is a Benertex fabric. It's by Amanda Murphy, and this is cotton shot. I have to show you because I love this so much. We have the whole line here at the, at the office. These are the... This is the rainbow of cotton shots. Um, if your local store is a Benertex retailer, you can ask them to carry the cotton shots. Um, these are a uh, wonderful blender in the huge library, and they have just enough texture to be not solid, but not enough to compete with the embroidery. So again, on the sample, you can see we used it. Um, you can just see a little bit of texture in the fabrics, give it some interest, but doesn't take away from your embroidery. Amanda actually designed this line with uh, embroiderers and us in mind um, so that it would be useful as just a nice background um, for embroidery 
and for, of course, sewing. And it, because it's a Benertex fabric, you can be sure that the quality is very high. It's a beautiful feel. Um, you can certainly use any fabric, pull from your stash. Uh, pattern fabric would be great. But I wanted to share with you because we do get questions about what fabrics we use. And I love, love this cotton shot line from Amanda Murphy by Benertex. So again, your fabric. Other notions and tools, uh, 505 temporary spray adhesive. Um, the, your, our expert embroidery tape wash away. Let's see, we got that here. It is a fantastic water soluble tape. We'll talk about this in just a little bit. I'm gonna use tear away tape as well. And uh, our perfect press cloth for when you press. So it outlines everything you need right here on the PDF. The next thing it's going to do is tell you how many of each piece that you need to stitch out. So if you were making something that required maybe two of one file, um, it will tell you, let's say you're making a freestanding building and you need two of a wall, for example. This color chart and instructions will tell you to stitch out two of file, one, two, three, four, five. So we really try and make it as easy as possible. In this case, it also shows you what it will look like if you make um, your wreath with one design made eight times like we're gonna do today. We're gonna actually make this one here, one, two, eight, seven, six, oh, one. So again, this, this PDF will step through the process for you. We're actually gonna do that together, so we did one better. But the very last thing that I wanted to tell you about on this PDF is all of, app, all of our collections that have applique include a applique template. So in this case, um, this is just one shape. We have the same shape that repeats eight times, so we make it really easy for you. Um, and you are going to print this just on regular printer paper. Um, make sure the most important thing though is that when you print this, you print it at actual size or you select do not scale. You'll find that in your printer settings. And the reason is that this is a template that we're gonna cut out of fiber form and it needs to match the size of your embroidery file. If you have this a little too big or a little too small, it's gonna make your life a whole lot harder um, in a little bit. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you print actual size or 100%, do not scale. If you're not sure when you print this out, you can see we have a um, little box here. This box will measure one inch by one inch. So if it doesn't, then you know you have a little bit of an issue. Um, but if it does, you're in good shape. So print this out and then you're gonna trim it. So you're gonna trim that out. Um, I like to trim right inside the, um, or on the black lines. Uh, you can see here, I've done a, a pretty good job. You're gonna do the best you can. Trimming sometimes is um, not always the most fun. Do the best you can. You're better to be on the inside of the black line than the outside. So once you've trimmed that, you're gonna spray it um, with some temporary spray adhesive, like a 505 spray, and you are going to apply that to your piece of fiber form that the instructions uh, tells you what size to cut that out. So you can do one of two things now. You can either trace this and then trim the traced piece, or if you're like me, I just cut around the outside of this. Um, again, you wanna make sure that you are um, cutting as accurately as you can. Um, so you're gonna make eight of these wedges out of your fiber form. Okay, so that's your prep work. You're gonna have your fabric cut based on your instructions. You're gonna have your eight wedges uh, cut from your template, and you're gonna set all of that aside and we're gonna do, um, we're gonna move on. So this collection uh, is, the designs are about, they are, you're gonna need about a six by 10 hoop for this collection. So you're gonna take your hoop from whatever machine brand you have, um, and you're gonna cut a piece of Aquamesh Plus that is bigger than your hoop. Whenever you're hooping your stabilizer, you're gonna make sure that your stabilizer fills the entire hoop, um, that you have a round inch outside at least, because you really need a secure base for your embroidery. And because this is an adhesive stabilizer, uh, we're not gonna hoop the project and the stabilizer together. We're going to hoop the stabilizer and then we're going to stick our project to it. So I'll show you a quick tip on easy um, hooping for this. So what I like to do is I like to take my stabilizer and I lay it over the bottom hoop component. And I just sort of 
like to run my fingers around the inside and sort of crease it right around the outside of the hoop. And that will help it stay in place and not slip around when you're moving, when you're placing the inside of the hoop. So that goes on there. Then you're gonna place the inside of the hoop on and then you're just going to press that in place. I find it easier to do it this way. Everyone has their own hooping technique. So now we have our stabilizer hooped. It's nice and tight. There's no slip. Uh, my hoop is screwed down really tight. With something like a freestanding project, you want to especially make sure that there's no slippage in your stabilizer because if it shifts, you're going to have alignment issues. So again, we hoop this with the paper side up and then we're going to take a pin or a pair of scissors that uh, have a, a pointy tip and we are going to score around the outside of our hoop. So this is going to be to remove our stabilizer, the paper. Make sure you don't score hard enough that you're cutting through your stabilizer. So just gently enough to cut the paper and then you're going to take the tip of your pin and you're going to pick back that paper so that you can peel it away. Just like that. So now you have exposed the tacky surface. And this is pretty tacky. You can see that it kind of sticks to my fingers. It's tacky, which is great, but again, it's not gonna gum up your needle um, and it is going to rinse out wonderfully with warm running water. So this, we're gonna, now we're gonna do the fun part. We're gonna start embroidering. So you're gonna take this to your machine and you're gonna stitch step one of your design, which is going to be a placement stitch. The placement stitch looks a lot like this. So here is your placement stitch. I'm not sure if you can see this. Mine's in a kind of a lime green. Um, this is your placement stitch. And what that is, is a stitch that is exactly the same size as the fiber form template that we cut out earlier. So now this is when we're gonna bring all that stuff to the party. So the, the nice thing about the pressure sensitive, the tacky uh, stabilizer is that we can just stick our template right down inside that placement line and press it nice and securely. You don't need to have any tape here, which is great because all of this is going to get embroidery on it. If you did need to use tape for any reason, make sure you use a water soluble tape so that there's not tape left over inside of your project that you can't get out. We're gonna take our fabric that we have cut based on our instructions and we're gonna completely cover that template. So, you could get away without tape here. However, because we are going to flip this hoop over, we need, we want to make sure that the fabric stays in place because we need to put a piece of fabric on the back as well. So we need to just, I'm going to give this a little extra insurance. So this is where we're going to use our tearaway tape. So this is OESD expert tearaway tape. And I'm just going to just use a couple of pieces. You don't have to go crazy on the front because you have the adhesive stabilizer, but it's gonna give you a little extra insurance when we flip this hoop over to place our fabric on the back. We're gonna cover the back as well because we want the front of our project to look as good as the back. So do the exact same on the back. There is no adhesive on the back of this stabilizer, so you may want to use a few extra pieces of tape to make sure that that doesn't go anywhere uh, when you're embroidering. We've all had that happen where we um, embroider something and then we turn it over and there's a wrinkly mess on the back because our fabric got caught or flipped. If that hasn't happened to you, that's wonderful. It probably will at some point because it happens to us all. So now I'm going to press that down really nicely. We're going to take this back to our machine and stitch the next step, which is our tack down step. The, through the magic of television here, um, the tack down step is going to secure the top fabric and the bottom fabric to your project. So I've already trimmed this, um, but you can see if you look closely that our digitizers are so smart. Whenever they do a tack down step, they stitch two lines. 
uh, or they program two lines to stitch, an outside and an inside. And you can see in some cases, I've actually trimmed away that outside because you wanna trim the fabric, so all the fabric that was outside of this line, real nice and tight to the stitch line because your satin stitch is going to cover that in the final step. So the nice thing about two stitch lines is that if you trim through that outer line by accident, you still have the inner line holding your fabric down. So you're in great shape. Your fabric's not gonna pull away. So you're gonna wanna trim as closely as you can. And then, so on the front and the back, and then we'll go on to the next step. The next step or steps are the most fun in my opinion. So I have done my, uh, wedge in kind of fun bright neon colors. Um, I just wanted to show you that you can do this in any colors you want and this is the color of isocord thread that was calling to me when I went to the uh, to my thread wall. So I've used these three wonderful isocord threads. Um, you match the thread in the bobbin and on the top to each other so that the back looks just as good as the front. Works beautifully in the bobbin as well. So you will stitch the next three steps, um, which will do all of the colors and the satin stitch, and you will have a completed wedge. So you're gonna make eight of those wedges. Um, something I didn't mention, and you can see here, um, there is actually, um, this is where we put the badge master. So let me go back a step. When you are, when you've finished trimming your uh, tack down, the fabric away from your tack down, you're gonna take your piece of Badge Master, we talked about this a, a little bit ago, um, and you're just gonna cover that trimmed piece. It'll stick right to the stabilizer. This is gonna do two things. It's gonna add that extra starch like we talked about when you wash this out. It also is going to um, act almost as a topper. If you've taken any classes with us, you know embroidery toppers are great for creating a wonderful finished result. It helps keep your stitches above the fabric as your embroidery lays down. So put this on here. Um, it's wonderful. It's better to do it after your uh, applique fabric has gone down because it's easier to trim. And also you want it on top of the fabric, not under, which is why we didn't put it on the hoop um, in before we embroidered as you would typically do. So again, you can see that here. You can see, I think, the shiny Badge Master. You're gonna make eight of these, and as you complete each one, you'll just take it out of the hoop, and you're gonna trim the stabilizer away about to about a quarter of an inch or so um, around your project. This is a water-soluble stabilizer again, but you don't want all of this. Um, you just trim as you know closely as you can without cutting your project. So then you're gonna take your eight wedges and you're going to rinse these pieces in warm running water. So again, the warmer the water, the faster the stabilizer dissolves and running water because it's gonna flush that starch um, away from your project and also down your drain. The, the stabilizers, OSD stabilizers will not hurt your plumbing. You can do whatever you're comfortable with, but I have washed it down my drain in with a septic system, with uh, plumbing regular um, out to the, the sewer system, and I've never had issues. No one here has ever had issues. But again, you do whatever you're most comfortable with, but you rinse this in warm running water just until you can't see the stabilizer anymore. That's the way I know, but it's still gonna be a little bit tacky. Um, again, that's the starch, and when it dries, that's what's gonna give your stiffness. So. To dry, lay this on a flat surface, something that's not um, fuzzy. So don't put it on a towel, I've done that, because the starch that's left in here will actually stick to the loops on your towel. You're gonna have a bad time. Um, I use a cookie cooling tray at home. You could put on some wax paper, um, even just your counter, something that won't be damaged by moisture, and let those dry completely. Then you're gonna take our OSD pressing cloth, put these face down, give them a, ni a nice press. Something that people forget a lot is to press their freestanding pieces before they assemble them. Especially in our building structures, um, having pressed pieces will really make your building nice and crisp and uh, definitely pass building code. So make sure you give those a press. Now we're gonna talk assembly. So you have eight wedges, 
all rinsed, all dry, nice and pressed and ready to go. So those are going to look like this. So just as beautiful on the front as the back. There is a good side and a bad side. If you look closely, you can see the satin stitch isn't quite as pretty on the back, but only you would notice that. So you can do, you can assemble this however you'd like. However, let's look at all of our pieces. If you look closely, this is, this piece is actually the back. And I know that for two reasons. I know that because I can see it on the satin stitch, but also do you see when I put these two pieces together that this, this leaf doesn't quite flow right? Watch what happens when I turn this over for the right side. Tim, our artist, has digitized or drawn this so that the, the artwork flows from one to the other. So pay attention to how those are assembled or how that artwork looks when you assemble this. So then once you have two together, you're just going to hold them together and you're going to zigzag. I'm sure if you can see this, you're going to take uh, just your sewing machine, thread it, use the same color thread as you used on this satin stitch and do a zigzag. Um, I use a nice wide zigzag to kind of cover, to catch both sides. I start uh, back up at the front and the end and zigzag those together. So you're just going to keep doing that. Assemble your project, go all the way around. Let's see. <laughs> it's a, a puzzle here. You're just going to keep going all the way around until you have your wreath. Now, what can happen is, and I've had this happen to me, is perhaps you're having trouble getting your pieces to stay together. Um, as you're stitching, they may shift. Or maybe after you have seven wedges together, there's a lot more weight and you kind of have to wrangle um, and things don't quite line up. So I have a tip for you. You can do one of two things. You could probably do more than that, but let's talk about two ways to solve that problem. So we have our wonderful product called wash away tape. You can take a piece of that wash away tape and lay that down um, and then that will hold your pieces together while you zigzag and then that piece of tape will dissolve with water. But let's say you didn't want to rinse it twice because you've already rinsed your pieces and then you would need to remove that tape with water and if you're like me you have no patience and you just want to get your project done and gift it or hang it on the wall or show it off whatever it may be. So if you don't want to rinse your project twice, here's an idea for you. Before you rinse your wedges, we're going to sew them together. So what I did here is I trimmed, and I didn't do it yet here, but trim your stabilizer as close as you can without nicking your satin stitch. So just, you know, close. It's okay if a little bit is showing. And then you're going to take and you're going to butt up your pieces and you're going to put your piece of wash away tape down zigzag, keep going, and then wash the whole project at one time. So you're gonna need a little bit of a bigger area to wash in, maybe your bathtub would work, um, but that way you're only rinsing once and your pieces are gonna stay nicely together. So that's our wash away tape, but what if you don't have any wash away tape at home because you haven't purchased it yet? I would strongly suggest you get some, um, but here's a great tip for you. So we have used Aquamesh Plus for this project. So again, that's your paper-backed water-soluble stabilizer. We all have scraps laying around. So what I did is I took a piece of Aquamesh Plus and I cut a piece, a strip of it, about three quarters of an inch wide. Um, and basically I'm making my own wash away tape. Wash away tape is essentially Aquamesh Plus in a convenient roll form. So um, you take your strip, and then you are just going to peel the paper away like we did earlier. And now you have a sticky piece of water soluble tape and you can just apply it just like you would your wash away tape and away you'll go. So that will dissolve exactly the same as wash away tape or Aquamesh Plus because it's Aquamesh Plus and you have used up your scraps. Aquamesh Plus is super useful for all sorts of things. I use it if I've trimmed, if I've made a hole in my stabilizer when I'm trimming applique, you wanna make sure that you don't 
have holes in your stabilizer. So I, you can make a patch, just cut a, a piece and patch from um, the front or the back. Um, I use it in sewing. You can secure a button down if you're gonna sew it on by machine. It's a super useful product. Um, and because it's water soluble, it's a temporary hold and then it will totally disappear with laundering. So assemble your wreath. Sew all eight pieces together and you will have a beautiful freestanding floral wreath um, in whatever motif or color scheme you would like. So now the question is, so what do I do with this? What, what's the end here? There's so many things you can do with the freestanding floral wreath. So let's look at this cover model shot here, cover model. Um, what we did on our example is we put a cake stand in the middle, put a uh, pom-pom on that, really beautiful table decoration for a baby shower, a bridal shower, just in your kitchen. Um, you could have a cake on it. That would be lucky. Um, you could also put a hurricane lantern, one of those glass uh, candle holders in here, um, a floral arrangement. You can also hang this on a wall very simply. You could put a thumbtack through it right to a wall or a sewing machine needle. If you're like me, sewing machine needles are great to hang uh, projects on the wall with because they're strong and they're sharp and they make a tiny little hole. Just go right through it after your needles are done uh, being used. But I thought it would be great to make a little hanger for this. So let me show you how I did that. You may find that useful or for any project. So if you're like me, you have a ton of little bits and pieces of things laying around. Um, I have a lot of little scraps of ribbon. Um, I think all sewists keep little bits of pieces of things laying around. So I took my little piece of grow grain ribbon and I looped it. I just laid it kind of like that. Then I zigzagged it together with my sewing machine, um, just forward backwards to make that secure. Then I thought to myself, well, how am I gonna secure this? If you have taken a class with me, you know that I love our product called Fuse and Seal. Fuse and Seal is a permanent adhesive. It's double-sided um, and it is one of our few products that is not stitchable. So this is made for after embroidery. You would use it to apply a patch to a scouting badge or a scouting sash. Um, you can we use it on card projects to apply paper to paper. It is a permanent fused, super secure. Any item that can take uh, heat from an iron, you can use this to apply embroidery to. So for example, I'll embroider on cork, trim it out, and then um, use this product to fuse it to a metal um, planter, a little decorative item. Fuse and Seal is great stuff. I use it all the time, which means I have lots of scraps. So I had a piece of Fuse and Seal laying around. I just usually keep it in that envelope. So I basically made a little piece of Fuse and Seal tape. <laughs> it can't get it off the table. I took that Fuse and Seal tape and I fused it to the back of my little loop that I made. Then you would peel away the paper, and I'm not sure if you can see this, but the, there's now the fuse and seal on the back of this loop. Then you take a wedge um, or the completed project and just fuse right to the back of your project. Now that's gonna be super secure. Um, it has a really good permanent hold. This, of course, this project is not very heavy, so um, you certainly don't have to worry about that pulling off, but it would hold something even more heavy than this. So now you have a nice, um, finished hanger. If you press this with an iron, pressed it flat so it creased here, when you put this the other way down on the table, it wouldn't affect the profile of the wreath so you could have it on the table or have it um, on your wall. It's up to you. So I um, hope you think that's a fun little tip. Last but not least, before I let you go, one of the best things about this project, and this applies to the freestanding holiday wreaths as well, is that this is a great project for decorating um, there's a around children not breakable um, for someone who doesn't have a lot of space uh, it's not very large or if you want to gift it if you want to gift this you would make it and then simply fold it up this would fit i think in one of those manila envelopes it's not going to break you don't need to pad it or pack it in any way um, you could probably even fold it up smaller um, 
also great for storage that way. This is a super versatile um, project, can be done in so many different ways. I hope you enjoyed this uh, step out of how this works today's Stitch Spotlight. I'm Carrie from OESD. Thank you for joining me for Freestanding Floral Wreaths 12876. I can't wait to see what you do with this. I'll see you next time. Happy stitching.